All right, let's go ahead and find out if Senate agrees with some of the moves that the government is making to fix a number of things going on. Uh, we'll go to uh, Mark Way for that. Well, thank you, Chamberlain. I have with me Senator Ainaya Abaribe, who is the Chairman Senate Committee on Power, Steel Development and Metallurgy, and is also the Chairman Southeast Caucus of the Senate. You're welcome to Senate. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. I'm uh, glad to be here. Well, we're hoping that that report uh, where you raised issues only recently about development of the rail lines in the country uh, would have set the scene for our viewers. Uh, but only recently, you were on the floor of the Senate talking about how the Southeast had been excluded from the development of rail lines in the country. What precisely, you know, uh, brought that discussion up? Let me make a slight correction. I didn't say that the southeast. I said that the eastern rail corridor and the eastern rail corridor uh, stretches from Portacot all the way to Medugri, which means that it's just not the southeast, but also the south-south, the north-central, and the northeast, and all that whole uh, section. Uh, those are the people that uh, we raised the motion about. And um, of course, when people are mischievous, the first thing they do is to give you an ethnic tag and then want to push you to one corner uh, on the basis of that. That, that. that wasn't what our intention is. Uh, our intention actually is to call attention to the fact that there's a constitutional breach. Um, Section 16.1b and uh, Section uh, 16.2a of the Constitution very clear. Uh, first, that you're going to use the resources of the country in a manner that will um, uh, bring maximum benefits to everybody and, uh, of course, utmost welfare to all citizens. Uh, secondly, that you're also going to do economy in a planned and balanced manner, which means that it's not going to be lopsided. And uh, what we noticed was the undue pressure and rush to get this loan. And of course, when we now looked um, very uh, critically at the letter that was transmitted to the Senate with regard to this loan, there are some very, very disturbing parts of that letter. If, if you uh, give me the permission, I, I will just read you only that section. Uh, they, they, uh, a line inside that letter says this, we are already in the process of completing the concession of the Potako to Medugri line to immediately link the eastern part of the nation. We fully intend to source further concessional funding to ultimately upgrade this critical line to a high-speed standard gauge line. In other words, this letter coming from Mr. President seeking for a loan, and the loan is supposed to, uh, to be for the Western Line, when the British built this, um, the railways in Nigeria, there was a western corridor which starts from Kano and goes all the way down to Lagos. There's an eastern corridor which starts from Medugri and comes all the way down to uh, Port Harcourt. And so if you want to deal with the railways, you're going to deal with both. Otherwise, if you just do one part and leave the other part, and as you can see from the tone of this letter, they're not taking any loan for this part. They're saying you're going to wait to find who will concession this part. And so we think that it's, it's a breach of the Constitution. And therefore, we had to bring it up. As Senator, I, 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 very, I, I find it very interesting that you say uh, that you were not talking precisely about the Southeast, that you were talking about the Eastern Corridor. Yes. Yet, you raise this because you're chairman of the Southeast Caucus in the Senate. Yes. In other words, 
you feel that there is a marginalization of the southeast yes. in, in, in the development of the railway, railways as you know, spelt out by the letter to the Senate yes. from the President. Of course, uh, as the chairman of the Southeast Caucus, we discussed it as a, as a caucus, mm -hmm. and we had to bring it out. And uh, of course, when you have to bring out something on the floor, you have to take the totality of what was written in the letter, and it talks about the whole corridor. You could see that it, it was a specific mention from Meduguri to Portacot. And the question now comes out to um, everybody that lives on that corridor, all the people who are in the cities, all the people who development had come because of that rail line. And we're saying, if today there are so much agitation in the country, if today there are so much cries of marginalization, if today that there is almost every, everywhere you go, there is a, a very serious... Um, outcry, uh, you, you wouldn't continue to do things despite this outcry. What you should do is to look at it. And uh, I think that we're doing the federal government uh, a very good uh, turn by telling it, take a look again at this uh, matter. The reason I find it interesting was because you were quick to correct me that you were not talking about the Southeast because usually what happens is that people label people, you know. Precisely, and, because, and because, because I'm chairman of the Southeast and yes. it affects us in the South, but it also affects other people. It affects people who live in Makodi, who live in Lafia, who live in Jaws, who live in Medugri, in uh, Gombe, uh, all that side. So everybody on this corridor mm -hmm. is affected. And you could see that when the motion was uh, put forward on the floor of the Senate, mm -hmm. there was overwhelming support because people now realize that, oh, it affects me too, you know. Yeah, but one of the senators there, I, I think he oversees transport, is Senator Shafa, who stood up to say that was not correct. Your position <coughs> wasn't correct as at that time. Uh, I think he, he also reeled out certain areas in the southeast and the south-south zones uh, which were covered. Let, if I can, not his words now, but I also know that the Ministry of Transport, if I read your statement here, says that the Southeast geopolitical zone has not been excluded from the federal government ongoing project. They cite two major rail projects of the federal government, uh, the coastal rail project from Lagos, Calabar, which traverses Lagos, Shagamu, or Benin City, Sapele, Wari, Yenagua, and also say that there's a siding to Otoeke, Port Harcourt, Aba, Uyo, Calabar, and also branch line from Benin City, Abudu, and Onitra, including Onitra Rail Bridge. Well, that, that is why I said that there's always uh, an attempt at every point that you, you, you push government officials to a corner. They, they try to make it. I mean, you could see from everything that is read. Mm -hmm. Did they say anything about uh, about uh, Umwaya to Enugu, to Makode, to Lafia? That is southeast. Telling me that, oh, there's a siding that is coming from Portacourt or whatever, to Aba, so that I represent Aba anyway. Mm -hmm. So that I, I should now keep quiet because there's a siding that gets to Aba. And I think that that is uh, very, being very... Um, economical i will say with the truth the truth is very clear and the truth is here in the in the letter written by the president that the eastern corridor will be concessioned that's just what the letter says and we're saying under the constitution you must promote a planned and balanced economy if the british built a western corridor and an eastern corridor and you want to uh, revamp the rail lines and there's an overall rail plan and why would this start what is the criteria to say okay let's just do the one that goes through the geopolitical zone of the mr president why what is the criteria what is the economic uh, importance of that that the other side will be excluded and not to be excluded to say you're going to also, also take a loan for it. You're now saying, we're going to wait until we can find who will concession 
who will be willing to come and take it as a concession. And our history over concessioning has not been very, very good. Well, Senator, I'm afraid I have to interrupt you when we return from this break. Uh, we'll definitely take questions from my colleagues in Lagos. Please stay with us. Sounds each and every order in this floor. This matter has to do with our meeting of yesterday, which was a closed door meeting, which was not an open meeting. This morning, Mr. President, I was surprised to find that on the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper, there was a headline that says, IPOP Senators Query Abaribe over Kano's Bail. Mr. President, we have always said on this floor that any time we have a closed door session, that it is only what the presiding officer says after the closed door session that is the sum total of our discussion. And I remember that yesterday, three points were made by the, as a result of our discussion, which was Nigeria's unity, and also the effort by this Senate to make sure that we help in bringing peace to this country. A headline that purports to say that this was what happened in our closed door session, which of course did not happen, does not in any way advance the cause of peace in this country. My constituents have been worried, they have called me, and they have been asking me, and I've told them that it is not true, and that I will bring it up on the floor and ask this entire Senate to please help us to ask Daily Trust to be able to produce whoever gave them this erroneous and uh, misleading information. The Senate does not query anybody or any of its members. That is the first place where they failed in casting this headline. Of course, the rest of what happened, each and every senator here knows what we discussed and how we discussed and what we came out as the end of our deliberation. So I wish to be given the opportunity to lay this um, newspaper uh, comes out in the but I know that God will not allow them to, uh, to go ahead with their nefarious entities. All right, but let the, the paper, please. Well, this thing is called, this is again, responsibility in the way they do their work. And their publishing rumors will not help us in any way. So I just want to appeal to our press men and women to find it in their hearts and ensure that whatever they do will be, the high, will be within the highest uh, degree of responsibility. And um, I am sure that all of us know that there no such thing happened during our closed door session. And to our colleagues, I believe that closed door session should be closed door session. Whatever happened there should end there. And whatever is reported as the outcome of that closed door session should be the official position of the Senate. Unless the, the spokesperson of the Senate indeed for, gives further clarification. Outside that, any other thing should be regarded as rumor. So I just want to appeal that uh, we maintain some level of responsibility in reporting what transpires in both, both the court session and if indeed in all our sessions so that the Nigerians will also know that both the press and the parliament are working together in the best interest of our country. So it's well noted that uh, very been. So I refer you to the Committee of Ethics of our Committee on Ethics to investigate uh, what happened. Stay leader.